26% of crypto holders in the US are women, which I think is a fantastic stat, and I think we can improve upon that. Women invest more into digital assets than any other asset class, which great. People have asked me why I think that more women are going to digital assets than, than other classes. It's because it's obviously a, it's a new area, but I think it's also because there is a lot of information out there and people want to be able to educate themselves. It's been said through different data that women are more risk averse than men when it comes to investing. But the irony of that is that they're going into an asset class that some people may say is super risky, but then that slightly contradicts things, right? So maybe it is just about clarity, it's about education, it's about understanding the space. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have another mind-blowing guest, Stephanie Ramazan, Director of Business Development at Gemini. We're going to talk about some crazy statistics with regards to women in crypto and tons of cool things about institutional adoption and many, many more. So stay tuned to the very end and enjoy the interview. Whoop! Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So Stephanie, I, I heard just earlier that you started off in the trade fi world. Now you're contributing to the crypto world. Tell us a little bit about your story, your background. We'd love to hear more about that. Sure, absolutely. So started my career traditional financial services and uh, spent a good few years um, in different kinds of roles, equity derivatives, brokerage, sales trading, then uh, hopped over the fence, went to the corporate finance side of the market, worked a lot in alternative investments. And back in 2017, 2018, I had my first foray into the world of crypto and blockchain. And I was part of the first banking startup in London that was being built to service corporates in the crypto space to confront the issue of fiat rails and getting fiat in and out of the ecosystem, which we all know is a big, big issue still. So I was with that firm as chief commercial officer for three years. And then in March 2021, I started with Gemini. That is so cool. And I feel the pain of working with the banks as well. We lost corporate accounts just to pay salaries because we were a crypto company with some of the biggest banks. So a big pain point that you were trying to solve, which is very, very cool. So bring us back to that moment where you thought, OK, I'm in traditional finance and boom, you had a bit of a light bulb. I need to go into this world. What was that feeling? Where were you? What were you thinking? In truth, I actually didn't have the light bulb moment until I was in the space. Uh, when I made that transition from traditional finance into building a bank to service the corporates in the crypto sector, we were, of course, still working with um, the FCA, the PRA regulation. It was a big drive around how do we solve the KYC AML issues. And I think it was really once I started getting into the space and attending blockchain focused crypto conferences, I had that light bulb moment and thought, wow, I am interacting with some of the most interesting, dynamic, intelligent, and fun people that I've ever met. And that for me was uh, the wake up call that made me realize I was really in the right place. Oh, that's lovely. And so, so you were literally like, you first decided I want to understand it a bit better. And then later on you had that aha moment, yeah? And so there's one topic that I know really matters to you a lot, Stephanie, which is women empowerment, gender equality. And I know at Gemini, you guys are doing an incredible job 
please tell us how, first of all, and, and why it's, it matters so much to you. Well, yeah, absolutely. Gemini are doing an amazing job. Uh, so shout out to every single person in Gemini. And uh, that comes from you know, every angle of the organization. Uh, everybody very much believes in diversity uh, and inclusion, and everybody is empowered. And I think diversity isn't just about men and women. It's about empowering the individual. And that is what Gemini is there to do. Very recently, one of our founders, um, Cameron Winklevoss, tweeted, great leadership is not about making all the great decisions. It's about empowering the people around you to make great decisions. And they very much follow through with that. Um, Something I'm very proud of is that Gemini Europe, we are more or less around a 75% female team at the moment. That's across different roles, departments, levels of seniority. So it's very interesting. There are a lot of corporates out there talking about diversity, trying to improve their numbers, but um, Gemini are actually achieving um, these, these stats, which is, and it's not just about stats, it's about those actual individuals. And we've been uh, scaling very, very quickly. We have doubled our headcount in the last six, nine months from around 300 individuals globally to 600. And what I find fascinating is when I'm meeting some of these individuals and I'm going through the interview process, it's that quality of talent that this whole industry is attracting. It's not just about what your grades were at school, where you went to college or university. It's about the potential in that individual. It's about what can you bring to the table? What are you going to add? And that's about the person. You know, a lot of our peers in the space, they're, you know, they're extremely tech enabled and they have wonderful functions. But I personally believe that being successful in this industry, it's not just about products and services. It's part of it. Great tech is part of it. But we are actually all, thank God, still human beings and interaction and relationships are also very, very important. I mean, 75%, Stephanie, is mind blowing. That's six to seven X the average fintech company. Or So I, I'm very curious. I mean, to be honest, I'm seeing more women even downstairs at Token 2049. But what is the recipe? Like if people out there, they want to get more women involved, they know it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips or have you seen any practices that help encourage this type of movement? It's a great question. I think there are various ways and means to go about it. Um, I myself very much see my role in the market as an educator. And that's whether it's, whether it's our clients or whether it's peers around me or people that may want to get into the, the space. Um, we don't expect everybody to be experts in crypto. And I think there are a lot of people out there that might be contemplating uh, applying to a company like Gemini or another company in the blockchain or crypto space who are interested in the area, but maybe they think, oh, but I don't have enough experience or I don't know enough. But there are so many resources out there to help people get themselves, you know, where they need to be. Gemini has a resource called Cryptopedia, which is an amazing library of information um, at the sort of very uh, foundation level of crypto 101, what is Bitcoin, what is Ethereum, what is DeFi, but actually you can really get into it the weeds with huge amount of content uh, and more technical features as well if you want to. A lot of the universities out there are offering uh, short-term courses in blockchain. I, I myself took one when I first got into the space. I took the blockchain strategy program through the Said Business School at Oxford University. That was great in terms of broader uses of blockchain. So I would say just keep attending events, uh, Token 49, obviously, great events, really diverse group of people and companies here, but there are so many events now. And there are so many resources where one can learn and just get to know people, start networking, connect yourself with individuals, uh, because you know all the companies in the crypto space are hiring, the space is on fire. Uh, there are lots of jobs out there, so many, lots right? of jobs. One of my, uh, my friends who's over in the US at Falcon X, another, another lady, she's absolutely incredible. And she made a really great point uh, on a panel that we were both on a few weeks ago. In fact, she was saying she found it very interesting that there were people early on in their career who are perhaps in banking, financial services coming to her saying, well, I'm interested, but this is such a new industry. I guess, you know, you're not really paying very much either. And uh, I like that she was very bold in putting them right, saying this is a big area. There's a lot of growth. And you know what? There's a lot of cash there as well. And people are paid properly, appropriately for their skill sets, for their experience and for their potential as well across the board. 
Very well said, and I hope you're inspiring other women out there today to get to know more about this space. And speaking of which, just kind of going back a little bit, you talked about how you had the light bulb. I would love to ask you, what are some specific use cases that you find really hit the, you know, hit the ground for you and you thought, okay, this is super cool? Sure, yeah. I think it's just the concepts for me of blockchain in general, there are so many use cases, more than we could possibly mention, but it, for me, it's the potential of how blockchain can disrupt so many areas. And I think, you know, with the uses of blockchain, it's just going to be so much more efficient in terms of, first of all, just moving money across borders. This is, you know, one of the perfect uses of blockchain at the moment. You know, if you look at remittance in certain countries, I believe that a country, um, to use one example, Somalia, for example, 90% of their economy is based on remittance and the cost of remittance is around 20%. These numbers don't work long term. It's not sustainable. So if we can find a way to efficiently move money across borders and make sure the money is getting to the right places, looking at blockchain, for example, use cases in refugee camps, I believe that people would be a lot more open to making donations to charity in general if they had a little bit more visibility and transparency in terms of where is their money going and what is it used for? and who is making those decisions. If we were to put these, you know, blockchain into these kind of systems that would give people that transparency, I think it would be really, really mind blowing in terms of the changes we'll see in terms of what we can actually raise and how we can move that money around and use it efficiently. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, for someone who actually worked in NPOs and NGOs, I can tell you it wasn't efficient enough for yes, sure. Yes. So uh, that's definitely one of the most beautiful use cases, right? To contribute to mankind, human, uh, human different ch charities and, and different people, uh, different organizations that help, you know, human beings. And uh, I would love to ask you, so earlier we were talking about Bitcoin and you said, I'm not just interested in Bitcoin, I'm interested in crypto in general. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the institutional sentiment is a bit similar these days, right? Where it used to be only Bitcoin, mainly as a trading or an, as an investment, not really yet believers, but more oh, because there's good opportunities in terms of ROI, they'll just trade it a little bit. Some people are starting to dabble on Ethereum, but why, why do you like to look at this as more than just Bitcoin Ethereum? Are there any particular use cases that you also think that are worth looking at? Absolutely, it's, uh, I mean, just if we go back one step, um, absolutely right what you're saying. And there are definitely nuances when you look at different markets. If you, you know, you can't compare the US market to the UK market. However, what we do know due to recent research is that one of the, the biggest um, investors in the DeFi space is actually the UK, which, you know, great news for Gemini. <laughs> We're working on it. So, um, you know, the tide is turning. And whilst we are still a few years behind the US in terms of general adoption, how institutions are behaving in the space, I don't think it will take us those three years or so to catch up again. We're sort of where the US was a few years ago, but I would hope that maybe it's going to take just a fraction of that time for really institutions to start uh, getting more involved in the UK. I personally deal with institutions across the board from banks to wealth and asset managers, family offices, fintechs, funds. And of course, they're all different in terms of what their approach, what their needs are at the moment. A lot of family offices, they're still in the mode of it's just about capital preservation, clearly very risk averse. Um, but there are a few of them who are a bit more forward thinking and they are now saying, hey, we want to put maybe 5 to 10% of our, our AUM into crypto. How should we do that? And gone are the days of let's just buy and hold Bitcoin and, and that's the end of it. Um, you know, there are so many other coins, tokens out there that one can actually get into and create their own strategies. There are a lot of companies out there, sort of the intermediaries who, if, if you're a a traditional trading house with a, or you have a trading desk within a family office, but you're not confident yet in trading crypto, there are companies out there who of course will manage your funds or just guide you in that. And I think those kind of companies are really important in just opening up the space and helping people get to grips. Were there like any specific like figures like Paul Tudor Jones or, or some people like Robert Kiyosaki? There are many traditional guys who just said, if you don't have, like you mentioned, five to 10% or even one to 2% of your portfolio, in Bitcoin, you're being irresponsible in terms of you know how the global economic outlook yeah. is. And are they are these guys some of the guys that help make your job easier and make these 
family offices and hedge funds suddenly open up and ask you more questions about this space or become curious about it? I think that's part of it, um, although I would say in my personal experience speaking to clients and institutions, if they're not yet in the space, they aren't necessarily reading the crypto-centric research that's out there yet. Um, but again, that's what I see as my, my job as an educator, and I'm personally interacting with a lot of individuals from my personal network, from the traditional finance space who are perhaps uh, crypto curious, let's say, they're not ready yet to press that button, but you know, I see myself as someone who can help them just get to crypts with the, with the ecosystem. And it might be another year or two until they're ready, but you know, when they are ready, Gemini will of course be there for them. That's awesome. So are you kind of hammering on the fundamentals a bit and just, just step by step, slowly by slowly, trying to educate them until they have the light bulb moment like you. <laughs> I think I, I take their lead. Uh, I don't want to be forcing people. I think that's not what we're about. We want to be there to support people. And we, we attend great events like this, of course, but we do smaller, more intimate events. Uh, I host uh, what I like to call a crypto breakfast uh, a couple of times a month where I'll, I'll invite people who are already in the crypto space ecosystem and some people who are not and we just we just see where the conversation goes sometimes we spend an hour and a half talking about nfts sometimes we'll spend an hour and a half talking about DeFi. sometimes we'll be talking about regulation and so it's really there are so many elements and facets to the industry that um, the conversation is always very very broad very interesting people have their own takes on the matter um, but i think until that regulatory piece is a little clearer, that will be the turning point, um, definitely, where we'll see more of the bigger institutions adopting crypto. That's exactly where I was going. So the regulatory aspect, which maybe our, our last theme, I was thinking about asking you, because as you know, like a lot of the companies that grew too fast in the early days, the exchanges that just kept on producing and opening to markets, don't have licenses, are not regulated, are suddenly getting blacklisted, right? Are getting kicked out of countries, and have maybe have grown too fast without being too cautious enough of, on that aspect. Is that good for the space? Or do you believe that 2022 is the year of regulatory clarity? And is that what we need next year? And if it's not, what, what do we need for next year so that we can continue to grow as if one family? Great question. I mean, I would love regulatory clarity. So it's a great, great way to put it. I think it's an ongoing discussion and we're really fortunate at Gemini that we have great relationships and ongoing dialogues with the regulators uh, in all jurisdictions where we want to be operating and our mantra is that it's better to ask for permission rather than to ask for forgiveness. So whilst we have been definitely slower than some of our peers to go into different markets, we want to do it in a really secure and compliant way. Uh, we feel that is really the only way forward. That's how we have so far built a really robust foundation for where we can, where we can take things in the future. Um, we only opened up Gemini Europe um, just under a year ago and um, we'll be going into other European jurisdictions in 2022, which is super exciting. Um, but I think it's, it's an ongoing, ongoing conversation and it's not like there's going to be a flip of a switch yeah, and everything's regulated. Absolutely. It's going to be a very slow and steady approach, which is, which is fine by us because that's how we have also been growing and building. And we feel that by going in a slow and steady way, we're going to, when we get to that end goal, we're going to be extremely broad in our offering. We're going to be very respected in the industry and we hope that we will be really the only rational choice for the institutions who want to come into the space, who want to have a partner that they can really see as a peer to themselves rather than an outsider who is navigating their way, you know, as and when problems come up. We just want to foresee what these bumps could be, deal with them, and make sure that we are just standing in a very strong position where people can trust the Gemini platform. It's all about trust and be successful in a way that you know, we really believe we can and embrace the market and go where, where the institutions need to be. 
That makes a lot of sense. And the slow and steady that you mentioned reminds me of the hare and the tortoise, right? And the slow and steady approach is a sustainable approach. That's when you know players will be here in five years, 10 years, mm -hmm. and uh, all the way down the future. One last question, because I would love to circle back to the whole women empowerment, women inclusion. Uh, you were telling me uh, later there are some interesting stats on women in investing in digital assets. So the last question would be related to women in 2022, specifically in fintech crypto. Yes. How do you see that going? Are you optimistic? Obviously, you must be. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I'm very optimistic. Um, I mean, going back to back to the sort of broader Gemini team, as I mentioned, the European team uh, is 75% female. I, I don't know what the stat is for, for the global presence, but we're working extremely hard to make sure that we keep making those diverse hires. Um, I read that um, women invest more into digital assets than any other asset class, which Great, very proud of that stat. Uh, Gemini publishes a UK state of crypto report every year, and we also do one for the US. And in one of our previous reports, uh, I believe that it said that 26% of crypto holders in the US are women, which I think is a fantastic stat, and I think we can, we can improve upon that. Uh, people have asked me why I think that um, maybe more women are going to digital assets than, than other classes. I think that it's because it's obviously a, it's a new area, but I think it's also because there is a lot of information out there and people want to be able to educate themselves. Um, and you know, it's, it's been said through different data that women are more risk averse than men when it comes to investing. But the irony of that is that they're going into an asset class that some people may say is super risky, but then that slightly contradicts things, right? So maybe it is just about clarity, it's about education, it's about understanding the space. And so I just hope that I can keep working um, with amazing people and keep going in that direction. I am getting involved in more and more organizations globally that are for uh, the empowerment of women generally. I'm working with a foundation that mentors women in business in middle-income countries. Um, and so I just hope that I can be an ambassador for empowerment empowerment of women everywhere. And if I can do that also through crypto and blockchain, I'll be very happy. Well, you're contributing to the space in a tremendous way. And for those out there, if you have a sister, a friend, your girlfriend, your wife, and there's a crypto event, please bring them along with you. And we'll try to hopefully grow this space all together in the right direction. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Stephanie. Thank you very it's much. It's an absolute pleasure having you. And guys, if you like this show, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and blast that bell notification so you get access to more of these timeless interviews. Join us every Wednesday premiering at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. See you next week, guys.